And welcome to Upon Further Review, I'm Josh Aubrey. Plenty to get to in this week's show. The Georgia Southern football team has officially started the preseason practice for the 2022 season. We'll hear from head coach Clay Helton and a few of the Eagle players coming up. We're also going to be able to send you out for some actual football games on the football field. The Portal Panthers hosting Bullock Academy in a preseason game earlier this week. We'll send you out for some highlights of that. We'll also check in on some of the stories we did over the summer. We'll visit with uh, Georgia Southern head basketball coach Brian Berg as they held a youth uh, camp over at Georgia Southern, also at Southeast Bullock. They were holding a youth football camp. We'll hear from head coach Jared Zito over there. And we'll also visit with Georgia Southern Athletics Director Jared Benko about the upcoming football season and more importantly the new teams that have joined the Sunbelt Conference. James Madison, uh, Old Dominion, Marshall, and Southern Miss. We'll hear from them and plenty more coming up on Upon Further Review. And a reminder before we go to break, hopefully you'll never be in an accident, but if so, please give our friends at the Sullivan Law Firm a call, 912-489-8888 or online at thesullivanlawfirm.com. Cook's Pharmacy, located on Highway 80 East, is family owned and operated by Lynn and Janie McCook, as well as their son, Josh McCook. Serving the Bullock County area since 2005, McCook's Pharmacy offers fast and friendly service where the customers come first. Vaccinations are available, including shingles, flu, pneumonia, and Tdap, Drive-through service is available with two drive-through windows for your convenience. McCook's Pharmacy offers free local deliveries and new customers are always welcome. Continuing the tradition of our family, caring for your family, McCook's Pharmacy, Highway 80 East. The Georgia Southern Eagles got their first of 25 preseason practices underway this week. As Wednesday morning, they hit the uh, field at Paulson Stadium rather than the traditional a beautiful Eagle Creek first day of practice, but they got in a good work out for two hours with Coach Helton at the helm. We had a chance to talk to him and a couple of the players about the first day of practice. Good opening day and very thankful that we have 25 practices. I thought kids came out with good energy, good focus, have really put a lot of work over the summer. You're talking about eight weeks worth of uh, meetings, uh, prep, um, plus strength and conditioning. It was evident uh, in practice one, the condition they're in right now and uh, the investment of knowledge that they made over the summer. So one practice down, uh, 24 to go. We need each and every one of them to be able to diagnose uh, kind of where we are uh, from each and everybody's role. Uh, Uh, as well as what we're good at and what we'll take into the first game. So good opening day. Um, I love these kids' toughness. I love the way they finish. Um, I want them to get the the offense uh, is one uh, by system that you have to start fast. And so we're literally having that start fast period is what we call it, uh, where we're high tempo having to get your brain triggered right from play one and be able to make communications, uh, know how to line up, know how to communicate, know how what your assignment is. And it's more mental than physical, but it gets the brain geared up and it gets a mindset that when you walk into that first game, that first play is the most important play. And then the next one is the most important play. Um, And so that's what that period's about. These opening six practices are really important. We've got a little bit of extra time to come in the morning, be able to really uh, get a great practice in, be able to watch the tape in the afternoon and reinstall for the next day. So these first six days are ultra important. And uh, then when we get into that school period of 20 hour work week we got to make the most of each and every second everybody's excited ready to roll i mean everyone wants the season to get here but you understand there's a process to get to that so you got to embrace every step of that it's been a lot been a been a roller coaster i mean a lot lot of ups and downs in my time here but i've I've loved every second of it and i want to cap it off with the conference championship we won three games last year so i think everybody is embracing all the change you know coming because we we obviously need need to do something different whether that's schematically or effort wise or just technique so I mean I think everybody's embracing the change that these coaches have brought so I think it'll be good. I mean I love Eagle Creek but uh, it's nice coming right out of the locker room um, it's surprisingly not as hot the turf's a little hot um, but we didn't have as many gnats as Eagle Creek would have uh, but I'm sure we'll get over there and we're gonna enjoy it. We've been training with tempo from the spring since we got started uh, it's a point of emphasis for us it was a hot one 
Uh, so we're on the sideline getting water, getting hydrated and whatnot, but tempo is big for us. And uh, that's what we're going into fall camp trying to do. And I think we did pretty well. Uh, definitely room to improve though. And we got more depth than ever. Uh, being a fifth-year guy, just looking at everything, uh, the ones, the twos, the threes, we're, uh, we're, we're deep, and uh, we can, we're going to be able to produce this year, and it's going to be fun. Felt good to get the first day in. Um, for like today was just about getting our feet in the ground, you know, starting fast, you know, again with the tempo, uh, controlling what we can control. But I feel like all in all, it's a good day. I feel like that's how it's been, and that's how it's going to go. I feel like that's going to be our edge this year. You know, we got a great offense, great offensive uh, staff and scheme. So, you know, tempo is going to be, you know, what, what gives us that edge going into the season. Well, this year the Eagles will be in a, the Sun Belt Conference with even more teams than before. Four new members for the Sun Belt playing football this year includes James Madison, Old Dominion, Marshall, and Southern Miss. Three of those teams will be on the Eagles schedule and be a part of the Eastern Division of the Sun Belt Conference. We had a chance to talk with Georgia Southern Athletics Director Jerry Binko about his thoughts about the new additions makes us better. I mean, I, you know, just coming back from a, the first in-person conference almost three years for everybody in the country uh, out in Las Vegas at NACTA, uh, we were talking to them about, I mean, I had so many people come up and say, man, Sunbelt Baseball. One, they talked about Georgia Southern hosting a regional, which was talked about a lot. I probably had seven, eight people come up to me. But then the next, you know, progression of thought or conversation was about the Sunbelt. And when you start looking at our, our 14 schools now, and obviously our four new members, um, for football playing institutions as well. Um, that's why I joked about, I really do feel like in, in many ways, um, when I say it's the SEC West, <clears throat> I'm not saying we, we obviously can beat all the SEC West schools all the time, but in terms of the, the, the SEC, I mean, the SEC West, you look at the Sun Belt East now, it's so deep. Um, but I also think it's more than just football, it's in every sport. And, and, and so where you look at overlap, you know, your baseballs, your basketballs, you go down the line of the 17 sports we host, uh, we got a lot more competitive. And, and so ultimately, I feel like it positioned us a preeminent group of five uh, conference in the, in the country. And really for Georgia Southern, um, you, to be the best, you gotta be the best. And, and, and to me, I'm excited about one, getting new schools in here, having more regional rivalries, but two, like there's no cupcakes anymore. And, and I'm excited about playing better competition. Cause this is your schedule with nine or 12 teams in a bowl game. I don't think that's gonna be an outlier. I, I think consistently you're gonna see as an aggregate, right? When you took it, your, your 12 game schedule, you're gonna have seven to nine teams a year consistently that made a bowl game. So in the past, the Sun Belt had five automatic bids. Um, I think six is more likely, and I think seven and more is, is all possible based upon how teams finish. So let's just say you're obviously going to play, you know, six, five to six schools in the Sun Belt every year that made a bowl game, right? Well, then you add in your out of conference, you're always going to have a bye game, right? So that school usually is going to be somebody that's, that's been in a bowl game. And you start doing the math when you have a strong group of five matchups, so that's how you get to seven, eight, potentially nine uh, teams that went to a bowl game. So for us, our model is not going to change. We're going to have a bye game from a guarantee standpoint. What we've started to do is, is take a little bit less money to get better matchups. And so when you start looking statistically at some of the schools, whether it be at Kansas State, at Kentucky, Ole Miss, um, historically, right, teams that are not in the Power Five have a better chance of beating those schools than going to an Alabama, or going to a Clemson, and so on and so on. So. That's the first step. The second step is from a, from a group of five standpoint, trying to stay more regional if we can, right? Because if you don't have to get on a plane, that saves, you know, hundred plus thousand dollars. And so we're trying to stay more regional, but also to being more strategic because you can't over schedule. There's, there's a school or schools in our conference that come to mind right now that is over scheduled. Um, you don't need two, two power five games a year when you have a, a competitive Sun Belt in the East uh, in particular. So you have to be really strategic. You know, you do want some games that on paper, you know, or, um, very favorable towards winning because you know the Sun Belt East now is going to be even more competitive than ever. And stay with us, high school action coming up next. Family Internal Medicine Associates of Statesboro providing primary care for Statesboro area patients since 1998. Providing complete physicals, complete sports physicals, Medicare wellness exams, full diabetes treatment, and education from lifestyle changes to oral medications to insulin pump therapy, in-house dermatology, in-house circulation tests, and ultrasounds, and in-house labs. Featuring nurse practitioner Melissa Beasley, Family Internal Medicine of Statesboro can accommodate same day or next day appointments to serve your needs. Family Internal Medicine and Associates of Statesboro, where we care. At Thadcock Home Furniture and More, we know what it means to find the perfect fit. The feeling of surprise. 
that just right moment of delight. It's what we see every time a family finds their priced right style and snuggle perfect comfort. Because for us, home isn't simply where you live, it's how you live. Badcock Home Furniture and More. Just right. Well, the first teams to get things underway in the preseason was the Bullock Academy Gators and Portal Panthers. First time they've ever met on the football field. Taking place Thursday evening at Portal. It was a great game. Went down to the wire. Let's send you out for some of the highlights. A rare inter-county matchup between the Portal Panthers and Bullock Academy Gators. Aaron Phillips in his first ball game as Gators head coach. Meanwhile, Jason McEachin trying to get his Panthers pumped up for the start. The Gators run the triple option under center, having some trouble with the exchange. But here, Ben Aaron does a good job improvising. He picks up 20 yards. A few plays later, it's Aaron going deep and finding Brendan Perosa inside the 10-yard line. And then capping the drive, Aaron takes it himself, goes in for the score. The extra point is good, and it was 7 to nothing Gators. That score would hold up till the end of the first quarter. In the second quarter, Aaron fakes the handoff, looking deep, but Elijah Coleman there with the interception. And then check out the spin moves on the return as he sheds a few tackles, getting down inside the 30-yard line. Then from the 18, Coleman keeps it. Finds a hole and goes in for the apparent score, but an offsides call will bring this one back. No problem, though, as Coleman looking for his basketball teammate, 6'6", Amir Jackson, and Jackson goes up, makes a great grab in the end zone, and the lead is trimmed to 7-6. to six. The Gators looking for more. Aaron with a nice run around the right side on the keeper, and then the jet sweep to Perosa who fights his way down inside the five-yard line. A penalty brings us back. And then it's Isaiah Smart going in for the score. The Gators take a 14-6 halftime lead. Scary moment early in the second half. As Perosa being carted off the field with a knee injury. Portal back on offense. And it's Coleman looking for his favorite target again. And once again, Amir Jackson pulls it in in traffic for the touchdown. The Panthers electing to go for two. Coleman nowhere to go on the left side, but he finds some room to run on the right. And we're tied at 14 all. To the fourth quarter we go and check it out. It's Coleman going back to his bag of tricks with a spin move down the right side. Then he breaks a tackle and goes 39 yards for the touchdown. The Portal fans excited as they grab a 20-14 to 14 lead, but the Gators going back to work with less than four minutes to go. They give to big fullback Bryson Scott, who bangs ahead for nine yards. And then it's the jet sweep and smart with the stutter step. He gets outside and he goes all the way 41 yards for the touchdown. The extra point would make it 21 to 20. The Gators lead under two minutes to play. Fourth and short, Coleman nowhere to go. Bryson Scott wraps him up and wraps up the win for the Gators 21 to 20. And next week, Southeast Bullock will be at home for a scrimmage game against South Effingham. And Statesboro will be home, or rather on the road at Metter for their scrimmage game against the Metter Tigers next Friday for both of those teams. And the Portal Panthers also in action as they will be on the road at Claxton and Bullock Academy will be home for a scrimmage game coming up next Friday as well. Well, Southeast Bullock also had a youth camp going on over the summer. Head coach Jared Zito had a great crowd on hand. We had a chance to visit with him about the camp. Well, this is our youth camp, uh, uh, K through fifth grade. 
uh, the, the idea here is all about football fundamentals and, and have a little fun. Just try to keep uh, everybody excited about football, teaching some fundamentals to help our uh, young rec league uh, teams out uh, so they're a little better prepared uh, as they go into their seasons and, and just kind of continue to build excitement around SCB football. And uh, had about, I think we got about 60 or 65 uh, participants uh, today. So it's been a really good turnout. Got our whole varsity staff out here and a lot of our varsity players have done an awesome job. So I'm uh, really proud of that. I guess for the for the kids, it, some of them might be just introduced to football for the first time. Some may have played a little bit. Absolutely. I mean, we got we got we got five year olds all the way up to uh, ten and eleven year olds. You know, some five year olds have never played. So maybe this is the first experience at it, and we hope it's a positive one so that they continue to play. Um, for some older guys, you know, we're going to work on getting a, in a better stance or better fundamentals, and um, you can kind of tell the ones that have played a little bit, and hopefully you build off of the skills they really have. Have you done this in other places? Is this the first time you're doing it here? Or? No, we, we actually did camp here last year, same thing. Uh, we included the middle school kids last year, and we made the decision going into the summer we're going to separate that. So uh, this camp is K-5. through five. Next week will be 6th, 7th, and 8th, and that will be a little more specific in terms of terminology of what we're doing. And We're going to introduce a very base offense and defensive package to those kids and coaches to help them as they start their practice. Um, everywhere I've been a head coach, we've done a youth camp, and uh, it's, it's great for the community. It's great for our kids. Um, it's great for the youth coaches. You know, they've been, If you ever talk to a youth coach and tell them how long does it take to get a kid into a three-point stance, he'll tell you it takes a long time. So if we can get that accomplished for them, uh, I think it's a big help and, and it helps them kind of get the ball rolling a little faster on their end. Meanwhile, over at Georgia Southern, Brian Berg was holding a youth camp and a big crowd coming out for that one. Let's check in with him and see how things went. Yeah, the camp's grown dramatically. Uh, we started off last year with 55 campers. We're up to 165 campers. These campers are coming from the Statesboro area as well as this region. You also have some campers coming as far as Chicago, Alabama, and then also in the Northeast. Uh, it's a great structure. We teach in the morning, different stations, com competitions right before lunch. Usually always have a guest speaker, and then we play five-on-five -five action in the afternoons. So it's been a great week, real excited. Every single person in our program is involved in the camp as a camp coach or a counselor. Uh, so it's been a great week so far. It's great for our community. You know, our players are, are heavily involved as, as camp coaches. They get a chance to build relationships with the campers. We're hoping, you know, these, these campers, because we will sponsor one game where they're able to come back to Hander Fieldhouse and they bring their families. But it's a great opportunity for us to be able to build, you know, the Georgia Southern basketball in the Statesboro community. It's a great experience for our basketball players here at Georgia Southern. You know, they get a chance to build relationships with the campers. They also get a taste of what coaching's all about. Um, it's day three, guys are getting a little bit fatigued, but we're excited about championship Thursday. Uh, all in all, it's been a great week. And that'll wrap it up for this week's show. We thank you for joining us. Hope to see you again next week.